off by with saying this one thing is that I am so happy that we finally, after years and years and years and years and years and years and years, we got a national holiday for Juneteenth. Even though we've been celebrating as long as I can remember somewhere, the holiday is now in place. And um, so we're, um, thank you, President Biden and uh, Vice President Kamala. It, that's a great feat we can, we can feel, we can be proud of. So the reason I'm having this conversation is that having arrived at being a senior, one of the things I noticed was the conversation that people are about seniors, that you step into it, you become a certain age, and there are people acting as if you're, they're very nice, very kind, polite, but can you do this? Do you need this? Do you, and you're out of the conversation. And it's a conversation that has gone on for generations and generations with my mother, my aunts, and I can see it now. I didn't see it then. But uh, the purpose of this, of me starting a show like this, is to cause an explosion into that conversation as to who we are as seniors and what we can provide for those of you in the audience who are going to be lucky enough to become seniors. In what ways have you noticed a change in which people really react to you? We're you know, in conversation with your family, your friends, especially health professionals and groups of people where you're kind of left out as to having anything to offer to the situation and treat you in a way that you didn't get treated when you were in your 40s in the conversation. Like you were, you were pulled into the conversation or included. Right now, you just have to inject yourself. That's what I've noticed into whatever conversation is going on. Um, what happens is sometimes they'll act like, um, I need help physically. I'm so old in my day. And um, the conversation, sometimes they talk and they just leave me out because they're sure I don't know what they mean. Is that in what ways have you noticed a change in the way people react to you, you know, like um, uh, ways in conversation with your family, your friends, the healthcare professionals and groups. There is something that happens. We step into already always listening of who people are. We don't even realize it until we notice the difference in the conversation. And then we ask ourselves, what is going on here? It's not the same as when we were leading meetings and doing this and doing that. It's, totally different for me anyway. So I was wondering if that's for you, and well, well, basically what I do is I just inject myself in the conversation, period. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> don't, I don't let uh, younger people think they can control what I have to say. And, All right. And, and so my, my uh, even in my family, my the young people will stop and listen. When I start talking, everybody stops and listens. Um, because they know I'm going to talk anyway, and and that I know what I'm <laughs> and I know what I'm talking about. So I don't I don't sit around and let see, them just try to control the conversation. The, you just said something very important that they know that when you're talking, they can't interrupt you because you're going to talk anyway. So that's something you have provided them to know that you have something to say. As that's, before, like when you were in a meeting. Uh, around other people, you didn't have to do that. That's correct. Yeah, you didn't yeah. have to do that. So that's a change. And I'm saying that to point it out for the ones, the people who are listening, that they can help alter this conversation. So Cynthia, uh, yeah, Cynthia. Thank you for inviting me. One of the things that I noticed, I do a daily walk. And when we had the mask on, I had double mask. People <laughs> would get off the sidewalk <laughs> When I was coming, even if I was going the wrong way. So, you know, I'm walking <laughs> slower than I used to, and they give me leeway as to have the whole sidewalk. Or if I'm going into the grocery <laughs> store, they'll let me go in first. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Those things I notice, and just my own personal conversations, I'm always asking for the senior discount because I'm looking for it. <laughs> but around my own family, my son is worse than my daughter. My daughter, oh, okay. she's the that's one. a male thing, I think. That's oh. good. You put you don't think he's, it's a male thing? Oh yeah, yeah. It oh. definitely is. He's already excluded me because I'm old and I don't know anymore. 
my daughter treats me like I'm fragile. And even though when one of her younger girlfriends or whatever asked me something, and then she said, oh, you better call my mom and check with her yourself because she's so busy. <laughs> I'm, it's okay for me to be busy doing my busy senior things. You know, oh, yeah. that's the conversation. I can see that that's changed. And I have my own wow. friends and I have my own outings. So they have to check with me, but my outings is usually with my senior group. It's not a lot of with hanging with them. I get invited as the grandma or who has a recipe, Miss Cooper knows, you know, <laughs> for a barbecue or beans or something. Well, you know, one thing that shocked me was there are people as we age, we there's a certain time when we feel old. It's like, I'm old, my God. So it's different. You can be 55, 65, 75, you know, like that. But at some point, you recognize the fact that you've crossed some sort of threshold and you're into this, invis this new community, this new thinking, this new whatever. And what are we doing? I know there's people I know are busy doing stuff. So I want you to talk a little bit about what are you doing now that you can do from your passion, from your creating, from just looking out there and seeing, I want this to happen. Well, Queen Anne, I am writing, of course, and working on other projects. And also, um, I'd like to travel more. And one thing I would like to relate to the past question, everywhere I go, they open the door for me. <laughs> Or can I reach that for you? <laughs> uh, I know. Yeah. I never thought that uh, retiring meant go home and sit down. I always saw myself as being active and loose. I never thought retirement went, meant go home and sit down. I didn't either. Retire I have friends. It's a point I often make that a friend of mine who's looked forward to retiring ever since I can remember her working, she finally retired at 55 and she's been sick ever since. Oh. So that was a thing to me. Do not ever retire. Yeah. Okay, John. Yeah. I, I, I Well, as you know, uh, Queen Anne, I'm a writer and I'm working on my third book. So that, that's basically taking up a lot of my time <laughs> right now. Oh. I have and, the one, you know, I still have that. I So now I know you got two more, okay. Yes, and and then the other thing, I have uh, nieces and nephews and daughters who are all in management and I'm a counselor. Whenever they have problems with their employees, I get a phone call. How should uh, I handle this? How should I handle that? Because they all know that I was in management. So they call me, you know, and I, I was a, a department head so they call me and say how do, how would you handle this how would you handle that how would you handle this type of employee so i get a lot of calls from my nieces nephews and my daughters because all of them now are in management and they they're trying to figure out how to deal with these employees so it looks like you're in touch with i call them the millennials yes uh, you know they're like a whole different breed of people but by really? you standing conversation on a frequent basis, it's keeping you abreast of who they are, and they can keep, and you're keeping them abreast, you know, vice versa. I guess right. I said that right. <laughs> and also, also, I, I spend a, a lot of time on blogs training white people. Do you? So, yeah, a lot of time. I try, I'm training so many of them. They, they, they're, I tell them, come, come out from behind your computer and talk to me like I'm a person. Don't don't make up these little things you do because you're hiding out behind your computer. Why don't you just now, tell do them? Do they think they're hiding? Do they no, know? Yeah, they, they know they're hiding because of the words they use. They know they're hiding. Okay, okay, gotcha. <laughs> so I, I have mean, a lot of fun doing that. Okay, so uh, Cynthia. All right, just to give you a little insight about me, I'm a teacher. I retired in 19, <clears throat> 2010 after 36 years in the classroom. I went straight from that 
to 10 more years of working in the school district as an ex, as a tester <clears throat> for the second language learners. So I was still going to work three to four months a year. I took a year off from that. I actually worked and became a member of the Santa Clara County Civil Grand Jury. So retirement for me really isn't retirement from the getting up eight to five or planning lessons and all that. I still just took on another job. I applied to the Santa Clara County Advisory Commission for the redistricting. You know, since the census 2020, we lost a congressional seat. They keep saying people moved or our, our population is down. And my sorority, Delta Sigma Theta, one of our pushes from last year to this year is to get people on the redistricting boards. California is one of a few states that actually has public input and they want people who look like us to be at the table. So that's my new project. I always have a new project in the wings so I can learn and be challenged. So, so that's one, that's a good point that you just made. I wanna just highlight that what you just said is so powerful. And that is to have a project in the mix because in that it'll keep you not only present, you can use your, you know, all the qualities from the past, but you're moving stuff forward. You know, we're all doing stuff. Um, so first I want to say what you're doing, because all of you are busy and John's an author. Sure, uh, Tarot is writing a book. You know, since you're busy teaching, I'm just trying to make it into what is seniorhood and adjusting to my physical condition. But I noticed that that doesn't stop me at all. I just still want to have conversations of, for the future, not so much the past. So um, looking at life moving forward, you know, what is the legacy you're creating for the future, for other people to look at you and say, I want to live into that. That's, I want that kind of life, that they won't be so tempted to uh, uh, conform to the conversation that exists in the planet of what it means to be aging. Because I think people fall into that, even though they are not that, and they don't even realize it, you know? And I'm one for wanting to change that conversation worldwide, because that isn't true. So the lady that couldn't be on today is 90 years old and she's the minister of the church and she's doing it. So I'm, I'm, I'm inviting people like yourselves to speak into that conversation to cause an explosion the way people think about people who are over 55. I'm just trying to stay relevant. I mean, that's the, all, all the things are changing so quickly and kids are, uh, I mean, I go visit my grandkids and they on the computer, you know, blah, blah, blah. It, 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 there's no one sitting down having a conversation anymore because the kids want to run to their room, get on their computer and the parents want to be watching their TV. And the, so it's like, I, I try to some kind of way keep, keep communication going and letting kids know what, what, what uh, life is all about, challenging them on, on, on whether or not they're going to school, trying to get an education, challenging them on staying out of gangs and all of this kind of stuff. So I just try to, to, I know it, I know they probably think I'm old, which I am, but um, I still try to stay uh, up to date on what's going on so I can speak to them on what's going on. So one of the things that you would suggest to people as they age, uh, you know, like um, to uh, not have that I'm old, what does that mean? But the old to still be the contribution to your family is your grandkids, your kids, by knowing what's happening, staying abreast of the current affairs. So Correct. that's a big job <laughs> itself and let them know that you know that you're doing that in the future you're living to, you're still adding on to that by writing books. So you're adding to their future and helping them grasp the information you're giving them and then doing your future that you haven't yet you know, been there. You, you enter into an area you've never been. This right. is all new to us, right. you know. So that's awesome. That's awesome. It's like, it's like at some point they're gonna say, "My grandfather told me this," correct, and that 
going to add to their thinking of what it means to be aging. Correct. That, that's awesome. That's it. But the good thing is, is that you're adding to the conversation. You're going to be part of the cause for the exposure. Thank you. So, Cynthia. All right. <clears throat> well, let me say this. I'm fortunate that I don't, uh, my kids, my adult children live here in San Jose. And so we <laughs> to have, I'm fortunate. I don't have to, you know, leave the city or anything. That's why I'm saying it. We tend to have Sunday designated as family time. And so my daughter makes a point to come see me on Sunday, just like we did for my mom. We grew up in a small town in Salinas, which is 60 miles south of her, where we had a small black community, but we did community things on a regular basis. And the thing about it is we try to make my, I try to make sure that my adult children now I don't have any grandkids, but I stay connected with our elders, all of their great aunts and uncles. I call and talk to them. I find out how they're doing. They ask me about my kids. We keep that connection going. That's one of the legacies that I, my kids really appreciate. They can go yeah. so many states that they got a cousin there and they can go stay with them. They can go visit them. They have dinner with them. That is something that I found that a lot of people aren't able to do Even right their parents are here the kids moved away someplace texas chicago when my daughter my son travels they can call them and they go to dinner or meet up or something that's very special to me and i've kept that going my family my husband's family it didn't matter you're all family to and then extended family same wow thing. that's great and i tell you it's such a support network and they'll call me my aunt great out in uh Saginaw, mission which michigan which is next door to flint where i have family we call each other when the, we hear something in the news there there's a shooting or there's a tornado and one of my aunts called me girl i thought you was out there stuck on one of them cruise ships in san francisco <laughs> i know you like I know you like to cruise. She's 87 years old calling to check on me. You see what I'm saying? That's mm. how fortunate I am to have a connection with them like that. So and, and that that is quite a legacy that you're building for sure. People well, are gonna remember you for that. It's been on since gonna pick it. Well, I'm telling you, that's one of the things I think is the most important for me to leave to them. It's know who they come from where they are and to stay connected. Staying connected is important, is important. Yeah, uh, not I, what you have, it's what you do with what you have and what you know. Yeah, I like that, I like that. So if we were, that would be a point to put down that point. Well, my husband used to say, it's not how much money you have, it's what you do with the money you have or what well, you have. True. And that's what I take throughout my life. I have, I'm blessed to have a house, I don't have to go out the house or anything. I can order in. I mean, I'm fortunate because my plan that we had building together worked. But for our kids and for our nephews and nieces, it doesn't work as easy anymore. It's more difficult for them. And I do understand that. But I still push for the honesty, the hard work, the education, all the things that got me where I am. They, they've seen it and it's still working. So, I mean, if they're doubters, that's on them. They can figure it out their way and i'm not doubting that but i will be there always to help support them physically mentally financially whatever they need okay. so what about you miss shoemake well miss shoemake is always interested in current affairs and both her children are too and um my daughter has gone on to ancestry and found several relatives that nobody knew about so you know she's having fun doing that and also um surprisingly both my son and my grandson credit me as giving them the interest for music mm -hmm. right. oh okay what i want to uh say I have uh, several projects, I always have projects. So one of the projects I started years ago, I bought a poetry book, and then I have three more that is not finished, you know, just waiting around 
for me to finish. And I, that's one of the things that I want to complete. And I thought I would complete it in the pandemic. Then this idea about seniors came to me. So I, I, I said that interested me more since I was one. And it was, it, I, I get information for myself just from the, having the project. So it would be also to finish both projects. The other one, I can't think right now what it was, but the poetry book and, oh, I have, you know, certain um, workshops and seminars that I created when I was working. Mm -hmm. I wanted to put those in a form to be uh, reproduced so that while I'm not doing them, I think it would be great to have them available for other people. You know, Queen Anne, um, one thing that I do, I love to do is travel. You know, I've been to South Africa and, and if anybody can go there, that's an amazing, but all of our kids know that we're traveling. They know where we travel, when we travel, whether or not we're on a cruise. And now the, the, those children are all become very educated and they all have their own money. So now all the cousins are traveling. They pull together a cousin group. And they're a all cousin going to group, oh, wow. They're going to Cancun uh, in, in October. They're going to Las Vegas, the cousins. And they're trying to get all of their cousins, whether they live in, in, this, in our city or whatever city they live in, but they're trying to get all the cousins together to go someplace and have a cousin day. So because they see that my wife and I, we go with my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law, and we also go with another friend. So we have a three couple group that have been traveling all over. Wow, the wow. And so our kids see this and, they, and so they're putting together, they're starting to do the same thing. Now they wanna to go to Rome, they wanna go here because they have a cousin that lives in Italy. So now they're putting together a trip to Italy to visit their cousin wow. who lives there. So, uh, you know, as someone yeah, was saying, when kids see you doing something, mm -hmm. they are going to step up to the plate and say, okay, this is what I, I would like to do. That is so great because in their, in their conversations, when they look forward to aging, they think I'm going to do more traveling. That's I'm traveling now. I can just widen that field. And look, it, it doesn't mean sitting down or going and playing cards. That's that's great. That is great. To have. I also wanted to add one more thing, and yes. I am currently and have been for the last three years, a member of the Barack Obama Boulevard Committee. That's a legacy that I'm leaving for the entire Santa Clara Valley, that oh, we great. got street renamed for Barack Obama, the 44th president of the United States. We're currently working on a dedication uh, event for August 21st. We're we'll be putting that family. information out. So that's We're another free. thing. It'll live long past me. Right. So I, I've been an active member awesome. in San Jose for over 50 years, and that's my latest contribution. Do you still yeah. have the MLK yeah. library? Oh, yeah. But that's, you know, one of the things that I said when I started for the Obama Boulevard, that's the only thing we have named after a Black person. But I was instrumental in getting that library named after MLK. Yes, I understand. And I was part of the committee that right. kept it from being changed to something when they joined San Jose I heard State. they were trying to change it. That's yeah, why they were. The yeah, but we don't have any Black things named after Black people in San Jose. They just, yeah, I know. And one, one of the things I found that when we started this venture, when I joined, because there was a group that joined before that started it, they had never renamed any streets except one in San Jose. They, they're not interchanging. And unless people push the envelope, that's we actually correct. got the city to change its policy. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. They, and it, oh, it, it's all seniors, most of us, I should say, but they understood that we weren't going to be pushed aside and that we wanted to make sure that this is something that we felt would be something positive for the country as well as the San Jose City. Um, well, you know, we did that in Los Angeles. Yes, we know. And they did it in MLP too, but <laughs> that was a carte blanche. It was done by the city themselves. We were a grassroots organization that asked and put a proposal together. And now we're still working on implementing the signs and things. But yeah. Way to go. I'm proud of you. Thank you. So we're we're working hard still. No, we don't sit on the couch. Right. No. <laughs> That's what I like about what you are saying is that your age, 
has makes no difference. You can still, there's still a contribution to make and there's still a passion you have to be completed. And that's the legacy that you leave for your children and other people, it's not just your children, because everybody's watching everybody, right? Yeah. And it's gonna be a piece that you're doing this, passing on, this is gonna be the piece that changed the conversation. It's gonna change it. I, I have that conversation with my doctor all the time. I say, don't treat my age, treat the person. Right. Yeah, you have a teacher, well, cleaning, you know, this and that. No, 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 no. I'm a person. Look at my age and, you know, look at it, but don't treat it. I like that commercial that the woman says, age is nothing but a number and mine is unlisted. <laughs> oh, I love it. The one I like is the lady in you know, a black outfit. Her hair is blonde, and she's doing like this. She said, they say that at some time you just don't care. And I said, and she said, what age is that? <laughs> I said, I, I agree with you. I agree. What age is it that you just don't care? Yeah. I intend to care forever. <laughs> so I, I, I think we're about closing. I, and I thank you for inter, in, injecting your passion into the already listening of what it means to age. And you made a difference with the people all listening. And mm -hmm. so that is the end. I want to thank you so much for being on the show. And I want to say one other thing about the fact that we got a, a, a national holiday for Juneteenth. So the people that has worked so hard on this for years and years and years des deserves the a, a, uh, credit. I don't know how you would go back. So many people have done pieces of this. You know, I have the book that Lula Briggs uh, wrote. Uh, and she's a national person for um, the Juneteenth uh, organization. And then they have the local group, um, you know, which I was a part of that. But um, it's just a, it's just that we we're here. And we saw the reality of it, that it became a national holiday. And yeah. for generations, that's going to live on. So we all get to enjoy that. You know, and I, I just want to say something else about that. And I'm keep on talking. The reason why those slaves did not know is because they were kept secret to finish the harvest of the crops. That's correct. They, that they is need correct. to tell that. That's, That's why they well, did it all for two and a half years. <laughs> they did it on purpose. That's part of the other information that people need to understand why they didn't know they were free. Well, you know, I went on Ancestry.com as someone talked about, and I found out my great-grandfather and great-grandmother were both slaves in Galveston, Texas. All right, now. Oh, there right. You. So my my big big uh, point was also to say that after years and years, it wasn't a holiday, a national holiday. I mean, we got a national holiday of Dr. King's life way before this. So I say that's a great thing to we accomplish at last that the Juneteenth is now a national holiday and well, there's country. Credit. Not just national, for yeah. the country. Yes. The country. That's the Correct. point you got to drive home. It's for everybody, all right. Americans. Right. Yes. To yes. Celebrate. To celebrate. Yes. To celebrate. And oh, even though we celebrate it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what. So I want to give everybody for one last remark. Like, what do you what do you think about the conversation we're trying to address, to expand on, to interrupt into the uh, thoughts of aging. I want no matter where you are in the world or what age you are or where you live, you can grow into a future as you age. Oh, uh, well, all I can say is keep on keeping on. I told my friend until they put the pennies on my eyes, I am going to be. <laughs> Very good, very good. Okay, Mr. Hill. Uh, Queen Ann, as I was thinking that, I am so happy that I lived in San Jose. 
in Santa Clara Valley, growing up as a, a really a young man, works first starting out and working. And all of those black people I met, we were all activists because mm -hmm. we were all trying to, to make it, but we were also trying to bring others along to make it with us. But we all stayed very active in, in our community. We stayed active in the city. We stayed active in the county. We stayed active at corporations. We stayed, and I am so happy that I was one of those people who got to grow up in Santa Clara Valley with all of you. And we were all there together and we all did things together. So as I age, I'm trying to pass that on to younger people now that you got to be active. You got to know what's going on. You got to visit. You got to go to city council meetings. You got to go to the county board of supervisors meetings. They can't just sit there and think that you, you're in the background and you don't exist. So that's what I'm working on here in Fresno right now, trying to get young people and trying to get also young people to run for office. I'm trying to get my daughter, who's an attorney, run for office. I don't care if it's a school board. It's a, I don't care what it is, but you've got to get yourself in there or things are going to be set back. I mean, you look what's going on in Texas, mm -hmm. where he's trying to say you can't even discuss discrimination in the country. You can't even discuss it. I mean, that's absolutely why, because you probably don't have any enough black folks sitting there going, wait a minute, hold it. That is not what you should do. And I think if, unless we own no school boards, no city councils and no board of supervisors, it's going to happen again. Wow. Okay, Cynthia. Well, I'm like John. John, I grew up in a community that was always proactive in, in everything that had to do from civil rights on. Right. And um, when I transferred to San Jose State from Hartdale Junior College, I wasn't as active as a student, but as an adult, yes. I was even president of my union bargaining team because I had the attitude, I was told, if you're not at the table when things come down, you'll be left behind. And yeah. I told them that's why I wanted to sit at the table because I wanted to be where decisions that affected me were were made and that's what I did before I retired. I was there for eight years. And my thing is for kids, young people, and anybody who's watching this, you have to constantly be thinking, how can I make things better, not just for myself, but for those coming behind me, our seniors. Healthcare is so disparate for black people in general. When you get a doctor assigned to you, You've had to teach them how to talk to you, just like you were saying, Anne. And many of our medical professionals aren't taught how to take care of people of color. We are not the same as all the tests that are done on white males. Those stats <laughs> don't have anything to do right, with us. Right. I learned that a long time ago. And when you go in there, right. go in there with your questions and wait for them to explain it to you. And if you don't understand it, tell them to write it down and print it out and give it to you so that you can go home and look at it and think about it because things are too fast happening nowadays. Everything's instantaneous and everybody doesn't read well. I realize that too. They do not. Right. So you need to slow down, think about it and just be more positive. Think about yourself and people around you because whatever you do, like you were saying, people are watching you. You have the ripple effect, whether you think you do or not, you do. Well, that's a lot of information, a lot of information. So I, I like the, the thing about reading the prescription because I have to look up almost every word. I don't know what that word means. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I, it does have in the paperwork what effect it has on you. You know, <laughs> and so I, I read that. I can uh, comprehend that. And uh, things to uh, watch out for, you know, like it's you know, if you get dizzy and stuff like that. I find it more important as I age. I didn't yeah. used to read all that as when I was younger because I didn't take much medication at all, hardly any, if any. Maybe mm -hmm. an aspirin, maybe once in a while. But um, as I age, I'm required to take high blood pressure pill. And what effect does it have on you? What should I be looking out for? So that's what I'm concerned about that no matter what doctor some of the doctors i don't even understand what they're saying so i go by say i said what it what you know repeat it so that i can get the answer and i find that's true even at the motor vehicle place you know people say your house is 
your car is junked. And I had no idea what that meant. And she thought I didn't understand what she said. So she wrote it and put it at the window. Junk. I said, I understand the word, but what does it mean about my car? <laughs> so yeah. it's different things you need to learn every day about how to take care of ourselves and not let anyone else make judgments for us. And this is with anybody. I find that people of all different races are having problems as they age because being, being set aside because it look, it, that's what you do. You put them in, a, in this place and feed them three times a day and that's it. Could right. be, and you think you've done your job. Mm -hmm. I know my mother-in-law, when they put her in, they put her in too soon and she stayed too long. So I'm very caught. And they took away her civil rights. She didn't get any mail. And she sold her car and didn't tell her, yeah, we did this because we want to take good care of you. You know what I mean? They didn't mm -hmm. do it out of meanness. They thought they was providing safety for her. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing we need to they have open communication with people we're taking care of uh, as they age. to get sort of a, a partnership going there, some agreement. Not just make an assumption because they're a certain age, because we really do not know. We, we do everything. We can do all kinds of things, and we can recover from things. So anybody want to say any last remaining remarks? Because I know Victor's going to take this, and he's going to edit it. He got all, all the unnecessary stuff that we were talking about. Can you hear me? And, and, and he's going to put it together and then link it, and it'll be on YouTube, and you'll be able to go on YouTube and see it. Um, and I hope you tell your friends because and invite them to be on the show because that's the only way we're gonna invade the conversation and have it change for the for the future for for the not only the millennials but it's because of the millennials that I saw such a distraction such a disconnect in terms of conversation and it's a beautiful uh, I I'm not fighting that I think it's great because at that age and you know the conversation wasn't that you know they're doing what we were fighting for they're they're now at that place they're talking entrepreneurship mm -hmm. uh inventing stuff uh, providing a whole new something have to have happen that you know it doesn't exist right now it that wasn't the conversation that, that we were in at the time it's totally different so I can't wait till what happens when they're seniors because there'll be another group and I don't know what they're going to be called, but there'll be another something existing that we get to see, you know, in, in reality. Thank you for the opportunity and yeah. inviting me. I appreciate the time that yeah. I've met my, uh, John and uh, Victor. I appreciate you allowing me to be a part of this. Thanks again. Yeah, you too. Yeah. The Queen, and thanks for finding my card. <laughs> I know you lost it on, so too, I know you I'm lost sure, it on purpose, but this has been a God show. In the 45 years I've been doing the show, I've never not had a show because at the last minute anything happens. And then something happens and you invite the perfect person to be there. And you were that perfect person, John. Thank you. Thank you, Queen Anne. It's, it's, it's been that way. I, I just don't worry about it. So, good work. I just want to thank you all.